Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Coach Derek from the PSB Showcase team. Hopefully this Sunday message finds you having a wonderful weekend. It's pretty nice out. Uh, sun's slightly out. It's a little breezy. It's not raining. So, <clears throat> but before I start, I, I have a little bit of baseball history, a little baseball knowledge I'm going to share with you. Um, you see I'm wearing a murderous roll hat with my Babe Ruth shirt here. Um, <clears throat> don't worry, parents. I'm not condoning murder. I'm going to share some history with you. The term murderer's row is commonly used to describe teams that are formidable in talent or have a, a, a big collection of talent. They're, they're almost intimidating. Um, <clears throat> the term was originally coined in 1918 by a, a sports writer. And he, was, he, he used that to describe the 1918 lineup of the New York Yankees. Um, <clears throat> but interestingly enough, that lineup did not include this guy, okay? Not me, Babe Ruth. There he is. <laughs> um, the 1918 base newspaper article described it as, New York fans have come to know a section of the New York Yankees batting order as the murder's row. It's composed of the first six players in the batting order. And these guys are Gilholy, Peckinpah, Baker, Pratt, Pitt, and Bodie. Okay? <clears throat> Not a lot of those guys, unless you're a Yankees fan, that you kind of recognize. You might recognize Wally Pitt because – he lost his job to Lou Gehrig. So, but <clears throat> this term, Murder's Row, was initially associated with the beginning of the Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig era, um, the teams in the, in the mid 1920s. Um, <clears throat> it's commonly recognized, and some of you that have heard this term have probably associated it with the, the 1927 Yankees. Um, that lineup was comprised of Earl Combs, Mark Koenig, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Bob Musil, and Tony Lazeri. Um, <clears throat> so that team lost the 1926 World Series to the St. Louis Cardinals. The very next year, they went through and obliterated teams. They finished with a record, a, a kind of combined record of 110 and 44. They Torched through the AL pennant and then swept the New York or the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 1927 World Series. So, <clears throat> interestingly enough, New York uh, Murders Row was associated with the New York Yankees, but it was not the Babe Ruth New York Yankees. So, today's message. Okay, <clears throat> today's message is all about this: the three C's. I always tell players the vitamin C's, three C's in baseball, and these were shared with me. <clears throat> by a, a, a very impacting uh, coach. Um, and it, it led to my success, and it led to my success even more as a coach. So um, <clears throat> I, I think these three C's really apply to players, coaches, and parents. So I'm going to start with the first one, and I'm going to read you. I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the first C, and I'm going to read you a definition, and then I'm going to elaborate. First C, capability. The power or ability to do something. I love that. The power or ability. <clears throat> the power. You're empowered to do, to, 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 do, to do your sport. Okay? Capability. Your capability got you onto the team you're on. Your capability got you on the varsity. Your capability got you on to JV. Or your capability got you onto the high school team. Okay? <clears throat> capability. The power to do something. The ability to do it. <clears throat> so when you when you stop working those abilities and you stop seeing success or you you, you don't see you, you get cut from your team or your program or whatever um or or you know the high school team you don't make it uh, uh, look at how much you're honing the power that you have how much are you honing those abilities um <clears throat> the second c coachability this means a person is receptive to feedback to receiving constructive criticism and willing to you or and will use that feedback and constructive criticism to improve his or her performance. Um, <clears throat> coachability. This is a huge one because oftentimes um, players, you know, it's kind of like in a classroom, you know, you, you connect with a teacher and you get it from that teacher. Same with coaching, you know, as a player, sometimes you really connect with that coach and <clears throat> you learn a lot from that coach. Okay, but if you don't connect with that coach, you still need to try and learn as much as you can from that coach. That's the coachability. 
Okay, because if you if you if you have walls up and you're like, oh, this I'm only playing for this guy. You got to be willing to play for whatever coach you got. Okay, and <clears throat> whatever coach you know, like my guys, I'm not gonna have them past high school. You know, they're gonna they're gonna be in college, so they're gonna have to be able to adapt to that coaching style. They have to be able to adapt to that coach. And this for coaches, coachability, I, I I liken that to our ability to learn, our ability to continue to expand the game. Um, <clears throat> the game's changed since I grew up playing it. I mean, I played in the 80s and 90s. Um, the game's evolved, and the game continues to evolve. Like every 10 years, it changes. Um, the players change. What, <clears throat> how you have to meet them where they're at. Um, you know, the, the kids are being raised differently. So <clears throat> oftentimes, you might take on a role as like a father figure. You got to be willing to, to own that. Okay. You got to be willing as a coach to, to be all those many different hats that, that were asked, but <clears throat> you can't get narrow minded and be, well, I coached this way in the nineties and I coached this way in the early two thousands and I coached this way in the early 2010s and I'm going to coach it this way. And this is the way it's going to be. Okay. Cause I know a lot of guys like that. I know a lot of people that are coaches that are really set in their ways, or maybe they run a program and they're really set in their ways. Um, <clears throat> Coach, evolve, continue to grow with the game. You ask your players to grow, so you as a coach have to be willing to continue to grow as well. So <clears throat> coachability for players, coachability for the coach. Um, and <clears throat> this also applies to parents. Be willing to take some constructive criticism. Um, be willing to, you know, if you, if you ask a coach about something about your player, don't think the coach is tearing your kid down, you know. We're, we're all every coach should always have that aspiration to make sure that their kids all succeed so <clears throat> we're just trying to help make them better don't don't continue to 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 massage that and, and and turn it into well the coach doesn't like my kid okay so coachability we have capability coachability third c is character i'm gonna read you this definition the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual <clears throat> character. You hear this term a lot. And I think in the day and age we live in, more and more athletes aren't succeeding past college into the professional realm. They have the ability. And many professional athletes are finding themselves falling off of pedestals because of character. Um, <clears throat> and it's not lack of it. It's just, it's not a solid foundation. And so I want to elaborate a little bit more on, on this because character is huge. Um, sports naturally develop and bring out these things called performance character traits. Um, <clears throat> performance character traits are grit, resilience, and self-discipline. Those are three big ones. Uh, there may be more. Comment if you, if you have some others you want to add to that. I'm always open to hearing other people's feedback. But grit, resilience, and self-discipline. Um, <clears throat> those performance character traits are huge. Those are, those are willing values. Those, you know, um, <clears throat> grit, how, how tough are you, how, how are you going to power through things? Um, especially in baseball. I mean, there's so much failure. You have to be able to mentally and physically power through. Um, <clears throat> that's where resilience kicks in, you know, being resilient to, to your environment. Um, maybe your team's not winning a lot. But that doesn't mean you have to let your game just go south. You know, <clears throat> you, you, can, you can be a, a shining star. You, that should be a goal. If your team doesn't win, you should be a shining star. You should want to make yourself stand out because that's going to make another team or another program want you. And I've seen it. I've seen it. I've done it as a coach. Like, I've, I've watched other teams play, and I see one guy trying to tilt the whole load. I'm like, that guy's hungry. That guy doesn't want to lose. He hates losing. And that's the thing is, I, as a coach, I coach, I coach to get the best performance out of my team, not to win. Winning is just a, a, a title. Um, you know, <clears throat> if you're coaching your players to get the best performance out of them, you're, you're, you're teaching them that they put their best out. They put, their, 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 they put the grit out there. They, they're resilient. They stayed self-disciplined. They show character. And, and when I see a, a, a lone wolf in a program uh, doing, doing his thing and he's, he's 
upset because he's losing. I like players that don't like losing. You don't have to always win, but you you can. It's okay with me that you you like that you, you dislike losing because I am okay with that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the mental and emotional and behavioral attributes drive performance and achievement. So, <clears throat> um, again, character. Who are you when the coach isn't watching? Who are you when you're not at practice? You know, and I've done I've done some messages about like who are you on and off the field. Because that speaks volumes too. Like, who are you in the classroom? Who are you on campus? Who are you when you're out in a store? Are you the guy that's willing to shoplift just because you don't get caught? Are you the guy that's <clears throat> picking on kids because they're they're they have lack of abilities? And maybe it's in sports, or maybe it's just in the hallways. Some kid gets labeled, and you go pick on them. Um, <clears throat> character, and so character is a huge one because. Because all three of those kind of are dominoes. You know, capability gets you to a team. Coachability will keep you on the team. And the character will be who you become as an athlete. And that's that could be just at the end of your high school career, or it could be the end of your college career, or it could be you, you make it professionally and, and, and you have to face the music that the game is over. Um, but <clears throat> as a coach, if you can help instill that and you can help them understand their capabilities and understand coachability and, and maximize our ability as coaches to coach them. And then <clears throat> the third one, develop their character. Let them know that regardless if you're there watching, people are. They're playing, they're playing and the name on their chest is going to be associated with them. So <clears throat> again, uh, the three C's, capability, coachability, and character. Hopefully this will help you as coaches. Players, if you watch this, I hope this will help uh, maximize your ability in sports and in life. Uh, and parents, as you see this, um, again, <clears throat> you, this does apply to you because in the game of sports, when you have a child in the sport, um, you are involved. And um, behind the lines, you, you talk to your player. The coach might have them um, between the lines and, and, and game moments and practice moments. But outside the lines, you are – almost like a psychologist um, you're 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 talking to them constantly so um, the more you keep positives in your in, in your in your tones and and your 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 dialogue with your with your player the more your player will be able to continue to adapt to coachability and power through and and the character will shine they'll be resilient and be able to push through slumps and uh, maybe benchings uh, or Getting, getting pulled when they have maybe they have a a, a a a perfect game going and you know the coach says hey you know what it's it's amateur baseball we don't care about titles and stuff when we're in amateur baseball I've got another guy that's going to come in and close this game out um it the the thing the the levels change when you get to college and professionally yeah those coaches will manage that but at the at the smaller levels too Remember, <clears throat> everything you do will follow with you. So um, that character at the very end, that is the person you are becoming. So uh, make sure that it's a positive reflection of who you are. Hopefully this message had, has you uh, having a great weekend. God bless.